this 56 Chev is really looking great, but it didn't look so great the very first time it rolled into this building. So Brent, give us a little bit of the overview. You were the one to find the car. You were the one to get it here. So how'd she look from day one? It was, uh, it was pretty rough. I mean, it, the body was fairly solid. It was a rolling chassis, 1956, 150. Um, the body was fairly solid. It had been restored sometime in the early 80s, judging by the paint and the pinstripe that was on there. Um, it still needed some work. I mean, some of the body work needed to be redone, which we got the body, main body done. We're going to show a little bit later. We're going to show how we got to this point. Um, but the interior is fairly solid. I mean, the floors are fairly solid. The rockers had been replaced, like I say, in the 80s. Um, and one so. of the things that was great news was the complex glass was all intact. Yep, the, the, the windshield. Some of the flat glass had to be replaced, right? Yeah, the windshield and the back glass was all in good shape. Um, the two side windows were cracked. I had a local glass guy make those for, I think they were $100 for, for both of them. So, I mean, it was fairly inexpensive to replace the glass. And all the chrome was there. That's a big thing, too, when you start looking at these um, older cars. If the chrome in the glass is bad, you can, have, you can tie up a lot of money in chrome and glass. Now, as the work started, Brent established a goal early in the game, which was to make this not a show car, but a daily driver, right, something right. that you wouldn't be afraid to just drive to the grocery store. And what are some of the forks in the road that that created on the decision-making process? Well, a lot of this stuff, I mean, when you get to building the engine, I mean, if you're gonna do a show car, you could build a high horsepower engine because you're not planning on driving it on the street. It doesn't matter what you have to put in for gas. Um, any of the body work, you might, you might, instead of welding in a complete quarter section, you might just weld in a patch over the area that, that's affected rather than replacing the whole quarter section. Um, the, I, there's just a lot of little things that to try and keep the cost down because you're gonna drive it, you're not trying to win points with it, you're not trying to win car shows with it, just to be able to use it to make it justifiable. You tie $100,000 up into this car, you don't wanna drive it, you know? So I wanna, you just gotta try and keep the cost down. And as we turn the clock back and people are out there looking for their own rolling stock, any buying advice for them on what kind of things to shop for, what kind of things to stay away from? Well, like I said before, glass and chrome are very important. Because they're hard they're, to replace. Yep, they are. Now, the nice thing with the, with the Tri-5 Chevys, if that's what you're looking for, you can get anything. It, it gets expensive, you know, I mean, to, like the taillights, I just looked at those, they're almost $500 for a set of taillights. But you can replace it, but, you know, you get into some of these odd, well, oddball cars, like a Packard or a Studebaker or something like that, where they don't make replacement parts anymore. Make sure all those parts are there. Um, before you start, you know, go and buy it. And if you don't know cars, have somebody that does know cars look at it, you know, crawl underneath and look at it and know that you're going to have to fabricate some parts. So it's basic advice would be stick with a mainstream vehicle on your first go around maybe. Yes. Um, and then of course, it's just intuitive. The more that's intact when you get started, the less work you're going to have to do. That's a good overview of where we started with the body on this car and kind of shows you where we've been and talks a little bit about where we're going.